Hey there YouTube, Aaron Robbins here with another fully beta tutorial. Today we're going to take a quick, speedy, awesomely overviewish look at Cubicle 2.5. This is uh, Cubicle 2.5.8 on the Mac, but uh, should be very similar to Windows. So we're just here at the uh, kind of main menu screen and we're just going to get started with a brand new model. So uh, our scene or whatever you want to call it. Eh, model, it's good. And the first thing you want to understand about Cubicle is it has two basic um, modeling, arranging uh, environments. One is sort of the model or the world mode, which is where we can take lots of other th models that we've made, which are actually called matrixes, and move them around. And you get this blank one here by default, which we will just uh, left click, select on, and hit delete. But this is the sort of world or model area. And if I click uh, create box, um, I get what's called a matrix. And so this is a bunch of voxels packaged together in a matrix that I can then move around and arrange with other matrixes that have voxels in them. And that brings me to the kind of the second editing mode, which is matrix mode. So before we go into it, though, just take a look over here on the info panel. You can see that the type of thing I have selected is a matrix, and the name of it is a box, which is not a good name. A much better name would be a box, because um, it's just a box. And then it's size and position and a pivot point and all that. So to go into matrix mode, you can just double click on it. And now we're actually looking at the voxels that make up the matrix, which exist in the modeling world kind of thing. Okay, so just understand that sort of hierarchy. If you get lost, um, it's kind of up here, like sort of like in a vector program or old, old like uh, Flash, if you ever used Flash, the sort of uh, scene, you know, type of hierarchy. And you can get back to it that way. Okay, so... Keep that in mind of uh, what mode you're kind of in. We're going to use both a little bit today. We're just going to go super quick uh, and create the companion cube uh, from the portal series because, you know, best thing ever. So first, what we're just going to start with is in voxel modeling, you kind of have to decide whether or not you're starting with a constructive or a destructive way, meaning are you going to start with a fresh, empty, clean matrix and build up your voxel model, or are you going to start with something that has a bunch of voxels in it and take away from them? Um, the companion cube is mostly made up of squares and cubes, um, so it makes a lot of sense to actually just start from a constructive thing where we'll, we'll start with voxels and take away where we need them versus build up from nothing. Um, and usually you mix both in there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just on the Create tab, we're going to create a box, and we're going to just create the center of the box here. You can select the starting color uh, that you want right here, and the very inner part of the companion cube is pretty dark. So then we're just going to type in 36, 36, 36, because that's the scale for the cube that I've decided on. And we have a matrix that's now created, and we'll just call that inner cube. And we're done with that one. All right, so next thing we want to do is create the... Um, there's actually four... Uh, or probably uh, eight um, slightly smaller cubes that kind of go around the outside of that. And so we're going to create those. And we'll go with uh, half of 36 is 18, so we'll go with 19 so I can move them to the side. And they are just slightly uh, lighter. I don't remember what color I picked for that one, but we'll go with that right now. And if it's not what we want, and it's like, where is it? It's hidden inside the big model. So you have your, your uh, translate handles here that kind of work like every other program, except for that Y is green in this case. Um, so we'll just uh, move that up, and then we will click on the front uh, word here in the little uh, camera widget so that we can look straight on. And uh, then we can just kind of count over snapping. It kind of snaps to the grid, and we want it over one, um, just like that, and up one, uh, just like that, and over one or two this way. Yeah, we need over two, because there would be no way to get an even gap in the center if we didn't have it over two, right? We need one, and then one over here. I'm going to show you that just right now. Uh, but let's put it uh, in front first. Uh, so we know front is pointing this direction. We'll drag it over here, and we decided to go one, two, and we're good. We can just click the home button up here on the camera widget and get back there. Then we're going to go ahead and select that guy and go over to the edit tab up here and choose uh, duplicate. You can, um, in any cubicle command, you can click these little stars up here to add it to the favorites menu right there. Um, I don't remember if I hit duplicate or not. It looks like I did. And we know we're good there. All right, so now we need a bunch more of these things, and I can keep duplicating and moving them around, or I can uh, left-click on that guy and shift-left-click or drag-select, however you want to do that guy. I go up to the Modify tab and click Create Compound, which is going to take these two things and put them into a larger container that is kind of parenting relationship, but not really. 
Um, so it's a compound. You're grouping those things together, if you will. And so now what we have selected, as you can see, is no longer a matrix. We have a compound, and we'll call these inner cubes. I didn't think I was going to be saying that today, but inner cubes, it kind of sounds like inner tubes. And we can just move those down uh, after going back to the edit tab and selecting duplicate. Uh, we will move those guys down, and it's going to get more exciting here, I promise, because we're going to stop making cubes pretty soon. Uh, and we're good there. And then, as you can probably guess, we can select those two things, go back to the Modify tab, hit Create Compound, uh, and then we'll spin around um, here, move those guys back. After, of course, going to Edit, choosing Duplicate, uh, we can move those guys back. Uh, now we have the inner shell uh, of our companion cube looking pretty good. Next thing we'll do because it's uh, fun is we'll put the uh, heart-shaped disc on the front of that. Um, so we're going to make sure we're in model world, uh, modeling mode, I would say. And we'll go ahead over to this create disc. And we'll just go ahead and create that. And we will uh, actually 18 by 18. <laughs> Oddly, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, and you can actually change the orientation. It'll probably start in X for you. Uh, but you can change it to Y, which is flat. And, but I want mine in Z. We'll hit OK. And we'll take a look at why we wanted it in Z. Looks good. There. I'll hit Control-Z to put it back where it was. And then switch that direction. And just move it forward so it's just touching the cube there. And that looks good there. Now we get to put a heart on this thing. So we're actually going to move out of just this modeling uh, mode that we've been in, or this kind of world mode that we've been in. And um, we're going to move into... Um, matrix mode. So now we're inside of this disk matrix, which we could call heart disk or something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and go over to the tools here. And the pencil tool is pretty much like a pencil paint tool, except for when you have enable walls selected. When you have enable walls selected, it allows you to start an empty matrix um, with the pencil tool. And you're like, uh, Aaron, I don't have any idea what you just said. That sounds like crazy voodoo talk to me. Um, so let me show you really quickly. I'm going to create an empty matrix and move that matrix somewhere so I can see it. And it has nothing in it. And so I want to come in here and select the matrix, double click it, and I'm inside it now. And there's actually, um, there are plenty of good ways, but it's not as intuitive to figure out, well, how do I actually start um, adding voxels to this? I can't um, do that. And I double clicked it, so I exited that. Um, so enable walls allows you to draw on the walls. And so if you can select pencil tool and then choose enable walls, you can actually get started there um, by, by adding a voxel uh, to the wall. Um, oddly, you cannot then continue drawing with the pencil tool out. You would then need to switch to the add voxel tool um, to do that. So we will go over in-depth uh, cubicle tools later, but I just wanted to uh, show you that setting for some reason. Oh, because I'm using that tool, I'm going to use the pencil tool to paint. So I just wanted to show you enable walls. So the pencil tool, usually used for painting, unless you have an empty thing and you want to start with one voxel, then you select enable walls and you can do that. But we're just painting today, so no big deal. Go in there, select some kind of uh, reddish color. I hope that's uh, red. I'm colorblind, so I have no idea. Uh, and then we'll go up here and just start drawing. And maybe like that. I, this is going to probably be the worst heart ever. It's already starting off uh, in that direction. Uh, nope. Yep. Sorry, companion cube. And definitely probably need four there and probably one there. I don't know. Don't do a lot of hearts. Uh, okay. Seems pretty good. I don't know. Worst heart ever. One in the middle. Where did we get wrong here? There. And there. So now you just want to fill the inside of that, right? To make it look like a heart. That's definitely what you want to do. So you go ahead and select the fill tool over here, and you go ahead and click on it, and you're like, why did it turn the whole thing red? And then you try to figure out, like, well, maybe I need a contiguous selected so that it's only the white areas, and um, that'll work for you too. One other way to have done that would have been to select the magic wand tool and select it in there, and then used the mask setting uh, to make sure you only fill in there. All right, so we'll undo those and just fill in our heart. Um, we need mask setting back on. And now, then when you have a selection, you just let left click outside of it with a selection tool. That would be the marquee selection or that selection tool or that one. You just click outside and you will deselect.
As you can see, my heart is a little high. It's uh, three from the top, but uh, one, two, too many from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the magic wand tool, select it, uh, use the move tool. We'll move that down a little bit. Just going to create uh, uh, some space there where we need to fill it in with some voxels. We we'll go to the add voxel tool. First, let's go ahead and to the eyedropper tool and just sample the color. Uh, and we'll deselect that area there and select the add voxel tool and go ahead and start adding back voxels. Okay, and now our heart is centered, and we'll go back to the world view there, and we have that. Next thing we need to do is just add the outer rim of our companion cube, and we're all done, so let's go ahead and go, we'll create a new cube really quickly, and we will select, uh, how about um, 12 by 6 by 6, and these are quite a bit lighter, um, so we'll select that guy there. You can hit preview to check it out, it doesn't help because it's in the center of my model, so I couldn't actually see it. Um, but that looks pretty good to me. And I always like to kind of snap to a more orthographic looking uh, view there. So let's just say three, one, two, three, two, three, and three. Doesn't feel big enough, so we better stick with two. Because I'm not going to recreate it. You guys have already suffered through creating cubes enough. Um, so then let's go to the home, or not the home, the front view there. That looks okay. As you can guess, we're going to go to the edit tab, select duplicate, and bring that up here, and well, we'll just bring it down here for now. I was going to do some work on it, but uh, we'll save that for the big corner pieces. Um, we need a bunch more of these that are on the uh, other sides, so we can actually just go to the top, and... Let's go back to the front first and select both of them. We could create a compound here, um, or we could uh, actually, I don't know, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. We'll just duplicate these really quickly and move them back. One, two, like that. Um, and then we need to get them on the other side. So we could create another cube, or we could create these uh, into a compound and rotate them. So let's do that because that would be fun. So we'll go ahead and select... Um, modify, create compound. So we'll select that and select duplicate and then move that off here somewhere. Looks good over here. And then also on the transform tab, uh, we know Y goes up in the air so we can just spin the whole compound right there and not have to worry about all that uh, recreating them at uh, whatever be six by 12 by whatever it is. Easier for me to rotate. Uh, and then one more time, we're just going to go ahead and hit edit and duplicate, and that will finish off the inner sort of pieces there. So we'll go back to home, and we have one more piece to add to the companion cube, and that is the sort of outside edge, which you actually get to do a little bit of work on, so that's fun. We're going to go back to create, and we're just going to recreate those boxes. 14 by 14 is fantastic. Um, we're just going to move that over here, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a cylinder that's just one voxel uh, larger. We can actually make it two voxels larger. That'll be a little bit easier. We'll just go 16 by 16. doesn't matter a ton here as long as it's kind of bigger. And you're going to say, hey, that doesn't look like a cylinder. That looks like a cube again. And that is because it is uh, just standing up right there. So we'll go to Transform, and we will uh, rotate that on its Y there, which just spins it around and does nothing. We want X. Um, and so we are going to then drag that down here and then over the top, and we'll overlap it by two, maybe, and two, and that looks good. Uh, and then we're going to do a Boolean operation. We're going to use this to cut out this. And so when you're doing a Boolean operation in Cubicle, you want to select the thing you want to keep first, then shift select the thing you want to do the cutting, and go to Modify, Boolean, Difference. So we actually need to create one more cylinder of exactly the same size. We will drag that out here. But this time, instead of spinning it uh, on or rotating it on X, we're going to go ahead and rotate it on Z. And then we will put that uh, over here. It actually needs to be moved just, it's got to be bigger than the thing you're cutting for this to work. Uh, and then let's go to the right view orthographic here so we can take a look. And I think I did, um, I think I did uh, two. Uh, overlapping, there's no overlapping one, or sorry, it's here. 
one, two, and then this one actually looks like it's right, but let's move it for fun. Yeah, it was right, one, two. And again, select the thing you wanna keep, select the thing you want to do the cutting, modify, Boolean, difference, uh, and now our companion cube looks more like an edge piece, like it should, um, and you can actually use this to um, do all um, eight sides. It'll work fine. Uh, there, you know, you're gonna have to you have to get down with your with your rotating. You're gonna have to do some Z and some Y and all that, um, but it will work. I'll finish that up, and there you go. And there you go, a hastily made uh, portal companion cube done in Cubicle 2.5. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Lots more videos coming. Yeah, thanks for watching.